Tap, I am back again and this is going to be my intro for a seasonal project that I came up with. Um, I've posted it in a couple of the groups that I'm on on Facebook for people who are interested in it. So if you're not in either of those groups and you're watching this and you want to get involved then you're more than welcome to. This is a seasonal project for the, from just after now, I'm filming this a little bit earlier, um, until Christmas time. A lot of people do like the 12 pans of Christmas, but I'm not a huge fan of Christmas, generally speaking. But I was standing in the shower the other night, and I was thinking about the 12 Doctors of Christmas for some strange reason, because if you're a Whovian, you know that every Christmas there is a Christmas special. This year's Christmas special is going to be a regeneration into the first female Doctor that we've had. So, you know, it's a pretty important event. So I was thinking of doing the 12 Doctors of Christmas, a Doctor Who themed project pan. And then I decided it should be roulette style because that just makes it more fun. Uh, so talking with a few other people and uh, a bit of brainstorming by myself, I did come up with 50 categories. There are some things that I didn't cover and some things that I did. Uh, I will link the Google document down below, so if you want to join in, you'll have the list of 50 categories that I came up with. If you don't want to use those 50 categories or you want to add some or whatever, that's that's more than fine. You can add other ones in if you want to. So basically the premise is that you pick 12 categories at random, and they're all Doctor Who themed, and then find something in your collection that you can tie back to that particular category. You're going to have to be creative with some of them. Some of them are a little difficult. <laughs> uh, some of them are a bit easier. Um, the, whole, the whole idea behind this, though, was to explore your collection. Not necessarily finish anything, but more to have some fun leading up to Christmas and just go through your collection and try things you haven't tried or that you might have been wanting to try but you haven't yet. And just find a way to explore your collection and have some fun with it. So, I have picked my 12 categories and my 12 items because it did take a little bit of time. Um, I use a random number generator on my phone to pick the numbers for which categories that I have. Um, this was the original <laughs> list that I wrote. Uh, so I just marked mine off on there. Um, so some of these were very challenging to find something for and others were very, very easy, like I knew like straight away, excuse the dog barking in the background, every time I film a video she starts barking. So let's just get into the 12 items that I am going to have a bit of a play with. Um, if you do finish, I'll, I'll update monthly, but if you do finish anything or if I finish anything or I found stuff that I really don't like or I'm not enjoying it, then um, once a month I will swap those out and pick a new category. I may choose to do that anyway, just to be able to play with more things in my collection depending on how I go. Um, yeah, so as I said, it's not really about finishing anything, more about having some fun with your collection. So the first 12 items that I have. The first number I picked was number two, which is Moisturize Me, which was um, suggested by one of the girls in the uh, Pan Fam group which I'll link them down below um, and as soon as she said it I knew I had to include that. Um, Cassandra is just such an icon and moisturise me of course. So for that I actually picked my Australis makeup finishing spritz. This is a brand new bottle. This is my preferred makeup setting spray which is not really exploring my collection but I'm using a different one as well so um, but this one is it smells like roses. It's got aloe vera and rose water in it and it's moisturizing so you can use it like any time during the day um, but I've been wanting to use this and I needed a reason because I haven't finished the other one and I don't like to have two on the go but the other one is matte and this one is not matte there is now a matte version of this I noticed at Priceline the other day um, this is an Australian brand clearly it's called Australis <laughs> probably couldn't get it anywhere else but uh yeah so my wonderful moisturize me because and the other thing is that she gets spritzed with water so i figured it really needed to be a spritzy type thing so so the astralis makeup finishing spritz my second one was donna noble i had such a hard time trying to come up with something for this um 
But in the end, I picked this lipstick from Girly Cosmetics. This is called Firecracker Red because, let's face it, Donna was a firecracker. Um, and she was a redhead, so, you know, if it's... This is actually more of an orange than a red, which I think is actually even better. Um, I'm actually wearing it today over the top of one of the other um, items. I've, I've actually done a Get Ready with No Talking, where I use basically all of these products. So this is what it looks like in the tube. Um, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. That is a firecracker bread. So that is my item for Donna Noble. The next one I picked was number 14, which was Unit, which is the Earth-based security people who deal with extraterrestrial type things. Um, the current, well, the head of Unit at one point is Kate um, Lethbridge Stewart, who is the daughter of Captain Lethbridge Stewart, which is actually one of the other um, ones in it, not that I picked it, but it is one of the categories, um, who was in a, in a companion way back, in, you know, like way, way back, he started in the black and white era, uh, so it's, it's a long way back, but there's all those connections, so um, what I decided to pick um, is this, well it's supposed to be a quad, but it's actually only a trio, I got this from Samantha J, at Samantha, Tamara J, um, there's three MAC eyeshadows in here. These are really the first MAC eyeshadows I've played with. I actually use them all today. I don't actually know their names and they're a bit damaged from trying to like pull them out of the thing. But there's sort of a dark brownie, there's a shimmery brownie and then there's like a bronzy, orangey kind of tone. I think this one here is satin taupe. Um, but I'm not sure what these two are. <laughs> I did kind of pull them out, but then I can't remember what I read, so that's, that's terrible. Um, yeah, so that is my one for unit, because they're always dressed in black, and I figured these three sort of, like, go together, so they're a unit. And so, sometimes you have to get creative. <laughs> uh, the next one I picked was number 15, which is Sonic. Um... I wasn't really sure what to pick for this. I was hoping I had like a lipstick or something that had Sonic in the title because I've got a whole bunch of like NYX and um, Kat Von D and I was hoping one of those or one of the eye pigments would have Sonic in it, but none of them do. Um, in the end, what I decided to pick was this Rim Will Scandalize um, eye... It's like a uh, cream eye crayon base shadow. This is in Tempting Turquoise which I figured kind of reminded me of the colour of the light on certain Sonics. Not all Sonics, because some of them have a different colour. That's actually what I am wearing underneath my eye today. It is absolutely, it's a really, really gorgeous colour. really like that. I'm going to have fun playing around with that. Uh, the next one was number 18, which was Celery, which I'm sure some people who only have seen the new Doctor Who would not understand what Celery is about. Uh, but the Doctor played by Peter Davison, who happens to be David Tennant's father-in-law, go figure, um, his Doctor used to have a piece of celery in his uh, jacket pocket and it was because there was a toxin that if it, the celery turned to purple it meant he'd it meant he'd been exposed to it, so he had to eat the celery so he wouldn't die. Um, <laughs> convoluted, but nevertheless. Uh, so I actually picked this cargo eyeshadow single in Green Bay, which is a kind of shimmery, greeny, yellow, reminiscent of the colour of celery. There. It kind of comes off more gold than green on the skin. I've got that on the inner part of my eye today. So that is Green Bay from Cargo. The next one I picked was Gallifrey, which is number 19. And for that, I actually picked the MAC 
mineral ice skin finish in stereo rose which I also got from Tamara J pretty much all my Macs except for a couple of lipsticks that I own um, have come from Tamara J this is one of those ones that's kind of like a marbly type of look and it kind of looks like the surface of Gallifrey which is quite sandy and um, desert like I used it as a blush and a little bit as a bronzer today it's probably not the best tone for bronzer because it's quite peachy I can imagine on a darker skin tone that that would be like really really awesome and like super pale so it works as a um, a blush and you know I did use it a little as a bronzer very lightly um, and it doesn't look too terrible so I figured that was okay so that is the MAC Skin Relax Mineralized Skin Finish in Stereo Rose, which was my pick for Gallifrey. The next one I picked was number 29, which is Susan, which is the granddaughter of the original Doctor. Uh, she was like back in the first ever series of Doctor Who. Um, she's kind of like an iconic companion in that she was the first, basically. Um, this, the item I picked, I picked because it has the name Susan in it, not for any other reason. This is the So Susan Lip Dome. This is supposed to be a pumping lip, lip tint, and the colour is Black Current. I put this on first, um, before I put the firecracker red on, just to darken up around the outside. Um, it's a lot drier than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be quite um, slippy. But it's actually not, um, and I didn't right didn't get any tingle or anything. So I don't know how it's lip plumping. Um, but I was actually really surprised because I expected it to be like some of the other lip crayons I've got, which are really, really um, slippy and soft. But it's actually not. It's actually quite stiff. So it actually might not be such a pain to use because I was actually thinking it would be one of those things that I ended up getting rid of because it's messy but it, it doesn't appear to be that way so but I'm sure we will see then I picked number 30 which is Sarah Jane um, again Sarah Jane Smith is an iconic companion she has um, she actually was in two spin-off shows of her own uh, the Sarah Jane Chronicles and canine and something um, and she's spanned both the older series of Doctor Who and the newer series of Doctor Who she was in some David Tennant episodes as well um, she she was kind of uh, the companion that really grounded the Doctor for quite some time uh, she was reliable and uh, she reminded him of the human component um, but yeah she was just really solid and stable and reliable and um, sometimes you didn't realize how important she actually was to the doctor but she was really important she was a very underlying part of who he is as an actual person so for that I picked the L'Oreal La Lip Liner Magic this is a clear lip liner so it does what it needs to do without being like in your face and it kind of reminds me of how Sarah Jane actually was I mean sometimes she get in your face but um, yeah she was kind of one of those things that you didn't know you needed until you had it um, this is actually brand new, the first time I used it was actually today and I, I, part of the other reason I put it in is because I was expecting that So Susan to be like really slippy and I wanted something to help it stay but uh, yeah, not so much. But I haven't ever used a nude lip liner before. It's, um, not a nude, a clear lip liner. Like, it's uh, clear, clear. It's a bit dirty. I mean, it's clear. <laughs> so, that is what I picked for Sarah Jane. Then, the I picked number 33, which was Favourite Doctor. So, you could pick any one of the Doctors, your favourite Doctor, and then pick something that made you think of that particular doctor for me my favorite doctor is actually number nine which was played by Christopher Eccleston and he often wore a purple shirt so 
So for him, I picked the NYX Color Mascara in purple. This is actually brand new to my collection. I've worn it like twice since I got it. Um, I'm wearing it today on the bottom lash line. It is, although it looks like it should be really purpley on the lashes, it isn't really. Um, my bottom lashes don't look like super duper purple. But I'm wondering whether if you had a white eyelash primer, it would actually help it look more purple. Um, I don't have a white primer, so I can't really test that. Um, but I still enjoy using it, and I'm, part of it is like because I'm a little bit older, having a slightly lighter colour on the bottom lash line actually helps not make your eyes look quite so old. It's just, just a little thing to know. Um, the next one I picked was number 41, which was the Oud. <sighs> That is a really tricky one to actually think of something. So this is this is more it rhymes. So so for the oud, I picked the Rimmel Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer in in the nude. The oud in the nude. I told you these, some of these are tenuous. Um, using this on my lower waterline today. Uh, that's actually what colour it is, <laughs> which clearly for me is not really a nude because I'm uh, white, white, like pasty white, but still, it works. The second to last one was number 44, which was Ice Warriors, which are actually a character that have been in both the older stuff and the new stuff. Um, they were actually just in an episode with... Um, Peter Capaldi's number 12 Doctor. Um, I picked for that the NYX Diamond Lust eyeshadow. Um, it's a NYX single. I thought I could depot it and put it in with the MAC ones, but it did not like me very much when I did that. Um, this is a fairly icy white, hence why I picked it. Ice Warriors, ice. Not that Ice Warriors are actually white or icy looking. But never mind. Um, I used it for my highlight, my eyebrow highlight. It's like right there, you can barely see it. It's not as uh, sparkly as I was expecting, quite frankly. Just, just saying. And the last one was number 45, which was Time Lord. And for that, I picked the moisturiser that I have for my daytime, which I've barely used. This is the Oil of Aloe, you know, knockoff of Oil of Ole. Uh, this was, I got this at Chemist Warehouse, so I've never really seen this brand before. This is an anti-wrinkle day cream. And I figured for uh, Time Lords, you know, they don't really age very fast. Anti-wrinkle um, moisturiser that's supposed to keep you young. I figured that was a good choice. So those are the 12 items I have picked for the 12 Doctors of Christmas Project Pan Roulette. This is going to run from August 26th until December 25th. If you need to come in late, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. As I said before, I will link the Google document down below that has the categories that I came up with. If you're going to do this and I don't know about it, then let me know. I'll come and check it out. Um, I will be creating a Google document for all of those people who are actually joining in so that everybody can go and support each other and see what other people have picked for different categories and things. Um, get some inspiration and some support while we're doing this. And I will link the two groups, um, Geeks and Beauties and the Pan Fam down below. The Pan Fam was actually started by LS, um, so uh, I'll link those down below so you can go and check them out as well. As always, if you want to subscribe, click the little button down there, click the bell if you want notifications, or there's an icon flipping around on the screen somewhere, um, a couple of other videos you might want to watch. Leave me a thumbs up if you like Project Pan and Doctor Who, and leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments, and I'll see you in my next video. See ya!